When you get your ham radio license in the United States, the FCC assigns you a call sign from a pool of call signs in sequential order that you don't choose. But what if you want to get a custom call sign, a vanity call sign? I recently went through this process myself, changing my call sign from KN4NEH to N0WRL. So I decided to make a guide to walk you through the process step by step because it can be a little bit tricky. Make sure to watch until the end because I'll teach you a secret hack to get a new call sign without paying the $35 application fee as well. When you first get your ham radio license, you don't get a choice of your call sign. You're just assigned one sequentially from a pool of call signs with the number and prefix indicating your call sign region. If you want to learn more about what a call sign means and how they're assigned, we have a separate video about that, so I won't get too deep into it here. Just know you're not choosing the first call sign that you get when you pass your license exam. Now, a vanity call sign is just a custom call sign. Just like how you can get a vanity license plate for your car, you can also apply for a vanity call sign for your ham radio license. Both individuals like myself and ham radio clubs can apply for vanity call signs. In this guide, I'm gonna be talking about getting an individual vanity call sign. Why would you want a vanity call sign in the first place? Well, there's a few main reasons. The first one, it's obvious, it's kind of cool. I created a ham radio app called World Radio League, so I want to change my call sign from KN4NEH, which was randomly assigned to me, to N0WRL because the initials are the same as World Radio League. So maybe you want to do something similar. Maybe you want a call sign that has your initials or spell something. You can do that, just like a vanity license plate on your car. Another reason you might want to get a vanity call sign is if you had a family member who was a ham that passed away. We call that a silent key. You may want to claim their call sign and continue their legacy. Or yet another reason, maybe you're planning to get into contesting, radio sport. If you want to be a ham radio contester, you want any edge you can get. Choosing a call sign that is easy to hear and understand rather than one that is hard to understand could give you an advantage. And that matters for voice modes, how easy it is to understand with your ear, as well as CW or Morse code. But before you hop in and apply for a call sign, you need to figure out which call signs are available in which formats you qualify for. You can't just apply for any random combination of numbers and letters. You have to follow the formats that are approved. When you first get your call sign, you're gonna get a two by three call sign, which means two letters, a number, and then three more letters. Like my call sign, for example, KN4NEH is two letters, KN, followed by the number four, indicating my region, followed by three more letters, NEH. The number indicates your call area in the lower 48 states, but when choosing a vanity, you're free to change that number. It might make sense to keep the call area the same though, so other hams know generally where you're located. In the United States, depending on the license level, you can choose from a few different formats. If you've got your level one technician license, you are eligible for the formats of two by three or one by three call signs that start with K, N, or W. Now, when you get your level three amateur extra license, you get some extra formats available to you that aren't available with the lower license levels. You can get one by two or two by one or even two by two call signs. For the two letter prefixes, you can also get ones that begin with the letter A. So that's an advantage of getting your amateur extra license because the shorter call sign of the one by two, the two by one could be an advantage in contesting, not to mention showing off your privileges with a shorter call sign. Now that you know what you are eligible for as far as the formats based on your license level, there are some online tools that can help you see which call signs are available. You can't choose a call sign that already belongs to somebody else or one that's reserved for some other reason. So there's a few websites like radioqth.net that allow you to search with different options in letter and number combinations. I'll add some links in the description so you can check which call signs are available and spend some time on these sites, play around with them and see what call signs you like. Quick note here is the one by two and two by one short call signs that are available to extra class licensees could be hard to snatch. So you're gonna use those websites to spot when they're becoming available and try to apply for them quickly. In fact, one by two and two by ones are so popular that oftentimes many hams will apply at the same time. And then the FCC conducts a lottery among the applicants to see who is awarded the call sign. Another consideration, if you're planning to get heavy into contesting, Think about how your call sign sounds when you say it out loud phonetically. 
Then you can use a website to test the CW weight, which is how long it takes to transmit your call in CW. For example, in one ET, you could say phonetically as November one Echo Tango, would be one of the shortest, whereas K1JQ is long in CW, even though they're both one by two call signs, which you can verify on the website to measure the call sign weight. While you're searching for available call signs and checking out the CW weight, it's best to go ahead and pick several that you like. All right, now you've got one or multiple call signs picked that you like, it's time to apply. So to do that, we're gonna go to the FCC License Manager. If you don't have an account, you can create one now. You need to have a ham radio license to access this. So if you don't have your first ham radio license, none of this applies to you yet. Go get your ham radio license and then come back and apply for a vanity. Now let's walk you through exactly how to apply inside the FCC License Manager. All right, so I'm gonna apply for a vanity call sign here within the FCC. So let's go ahead and we're on the License Manager and we're gonna click Login. Okay, now that I'm inside the License Manager, I'm going to go to Request Vanity Call Sign. I'm gonna select No on Exempt and No from Exempt on Regulatory Fees. I'm gonna go from this because it's a primary station preference list. I'm not a close relative of the former holder and I'm not the former primary station holder. So this is just the standard option. You can enter multiple options here. I'm gonna do N0 WRL, which is the option that I want. You can enter multiple, but I'll just do that. I'm gonna confirm all my information on the license information. Has the applicant ever been a convicted of a felony? No. There's gonna be a $35 fee here. So I'm going to continue to certify. I'll give my signature here, title. Not sure if I need a title, let's try that. Now I'm going to continue to course for payment. Log into course here. I'm gonna click manage existing FRNs, bills and fees, view application and fees. I'm gonna to go to view and make payments. I'm gonna click make payment. I will pay by credit or debit card. There we go. And I should be receiving my call sign, assuming it's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and print my confirmation here. And that'll be it. It takes 18 days for the FCC to process your application. You can log back into the FCC License Manager anytime to check the status of your application. Once the status goes to approved, you should see your call sign update on the FCC License Search database as well. At that point, congratulations, you officially have a new call sign. At this point, you must start using your new call sign for all communications. It helps to know your phonetic alphabet and get used to saying your new call sign too. It's a good reminder at this point to update your call sign in your logbook or any of your other online accounts. I use the World Radio League for logging, so I'll edit my account and change my call sign there. All right, a few frequently asked questions. Can you apply for a vanity call sign more than once? Absolutely. If you change your call sign and want to get another one, you can file another application. Just remember, you'll have to pay the $35 fee again. And remember, you can also add backup options, up to 25 options, when you're making the application for your vanity call sign so you can avoid paying that $35 fee and they'll choose the next option on your list. What if I change my mind? Can I get my old call sign back? The answer is yes. If you change call signs and want to get your old call sign back, you have a grace period of two years where your old call sign is still reserved. So you can go through the application process and choose that third option and reclaim your old call sign back. And again, you'll pay a fee for each application. How do I get a call sign from a silent key? A deceased family member. When a ham radio operator is deceased, their call sign is reserved for two years for the family and remains unavailable for 30 days once called back by the FCC. In order to claim the call sign from a deceased family member, a silent key, enter that during the application process as we described in the earlier steps. Next question, how long does it take the FCC to process a vanity call sign request? The FCC takes 18 days to process a vanity call sign request and issue a new license. How much does it cost to get a vanity call sign? You pay a $35 application fee each time you apply. Whether or not it's successful, you're still gonna pay the $35. So pro tip, 
add those couple of options for your call sign. So that way, even if your application fails for your first choice, you don't have to pay the $35 again to get your second or third or fourth choice. All right, at the beginning of the video, I said there was a secret hack to get a new call sign without paying the fee. So now I'll tell you what that secret hack is. And the trick is when you're upgrading from your level one technician to your level two general or extra, you can request a new call sign when you get issued the new license. Just fill out the new request for the call sign with your paperwork as you pass your license. You must tell the VE or the volunteer examiner that you want to change your call sign so they can get your paperwork submitted. Another way is you can also request a new sequential call sign, so not a vanity call sign, but just a new call sign in general when your license renews every 10 years. So that's not really a vanity call sign, but is a good way to change your call sign. So thanks so much for watching this video and good luck getting your vanity call sign. If you want to get your ham radio license or upgrade general or extra, be sure to download the ham radio prep mobile app on your phone. It breaks everything down step by step with video lessons, quizzes, practice tests. You can even do a lesson or two laying in bed at night and be ready to test in a week. It's truly the best way to study for and pass your ham radio license exam. And if you're already licensed, but you're starting to log your contacts or getting into POTA or contesting, be sure to check out the World Radio League, which has a logbook, spotting, and many other great features for logging your ham radio contacts. This is James KN4NEH, soon to be in zero WRL, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.